okay so like I said continuing on with this police brutality situation that we know exists so the question is what are we gonna do about it as uh, black men so I'm just saying that we need to come into whenever we step out of our homes as black men we need to understand that we need to be military minded we can't go out of our homes thinking oh man you know uh, we're going into Disneyland and we're gonna go do something that's um, that you know you taking a, ch a risk as a black man you have a high risk of not coming back home once you step out your house no matter what you're going to go do something productive something not productive the odds are higher for black men that they won't come home out of everybody else right okay so what we need to do we need to learn how to be military minded that way we will approach when we get approached by people that view us as an enemy which is typically police departments they view us they, they when you get the energy from them that they view on you as a, not all police some police ain't gonna come give you that energy but, but a lot of times they will give you that energy up front that they looking to jump on you for something so once you see you got that energy coming at you then you need to be military minded and understand okay I have to there's some things I gotta recognize and 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 follow through with so that I can wake up in my own bed the next morning right okay so let's go through some of the things we need to do number one you're gonna have to be calm this happened to this young man because he was just frustrated with them he decided that hey I'm not taking it no more I'm gonna let you guys know how I feel about it like they care hey that was the mistake he made he thought he was talking to somebody that actually gave a goddamn about what he how he felt that not be a military mind that's like you going to Iraq right now and you know you get out there you get caught out there in a, in a firefight and then you say oh wait a minute guys talking to the, the, the people that you fighting against the enemy oh wait a minute guys I don't have no bullets stop shooting I gotta go back and get my bullets you think they're gonna stop shooting and let you go back and get more ammo no you gotta be military minded man you gotta be military minded you know your enemy ain't gonna never stop until they get if they get you in a position where they got you like that they not gonna stop so this is the situation you in black man you gotta think you in this position so first thing you gotta do is be calm you all get all crazy you give you, you, they. A lot of times, these police are like animals, man. You know, like a dog. You can't just wave around, and jump around in front of a wild animal because they'll get that wild animal will attack you just for its own safety. And same thing with these police, man. They just like wild animals a lot of the times. They, especially the Caucasian ones, man. They just will just you start flailing around as a black person, man. To them, that's like blood coming. That's like a shark with a tank with blood. They just go crazy. They just jump on you. But that's you gotta understand. That's the mentality that they have. This is once they present themselves as your enemy, then you have to understand. This is how they all they need is a reason to uh, to uh, cause your death. All they need is a reason. And this only had turned into a big deal because it was video. For every one video that you have out there like this, you got a thousand other young black men and women and children getting killed by police brutality or get injured by with police brutality that don't never nothing never happen nothing no report never go out nothing never happens from it so number one be calm number two identify yourself you have documents on you you have a driver's license and id some type of way to identify yourself identify yourself that way you uh, gonna let them know hey I'm I, this is who I am and I'm a citizen or you're not a citizen or whatever but typically you be a citizen of the US, US, United States citizen then you, you identify yourself as a citizen see these people jump on you like this because they don't feel that you're a citizen but you got identification that that shows you a citizen that's will alleviate a little bit of that that can alleviate a little bit of that I, I should say Next thing, you want to speak in clear, complete sentences. You don't want to be whining. You don't want to be, you know, flailing your arms around. You want to speak clearly. You want them to understand what you're saying completely. Number four, this is very important. Black man, know your rights. A lot of time you out here, you, you working and you don't know your rights, man. So these people, these police can do different things like this and you don't know your rights. 
you don't know you within your rights to you know uh, stop in a place you don't have to pull over at where they when they start where they pull you over at you don't have to pull over there you can pull over someplace where it's there's a lot of people around because that's your right to be stop pull over where you feel is safe and you explain to them after you pull over they go why did you this happened to me many a time why didn't you pull over where we told you to pull over because I'm not going to let you pull me over someplace where I don't feel safe that's my rights I have the right to pull over where I feel is safe and whatever you want to say to me you can say to these me in front of these people at this bus stop that's fine but that's why I put then pull over here because I don't want nothing happening I got there's <laughs> a lot of odds against me going home out of me and you going home it's the odds against me going home so I'm not gonna put myself in that position you understand that don't you officer you know they're gonna be mad at you but so what let them be mad at you while you put folding the ticket putting up in your pocket or whatever or just going a lot of times they let you go once they understand that you have a good understanding if whatever they stopping you for anyway know your rights man so that means that's on you black man you got to study up and find out what your rights are submit to their authority so as not to violate your religion yes if they tell you put your hands behind your back or, or put the, come over here sit down you, you say yes sir as long as they're not having you violate your religion come over here sit down next to me and uh, give me all your property no that's sir I can't do that my rights well, uh, that's once again knowing your rights you know when you being your religion is being violated and you don't have to do that you don't have to submit to that right a lot of times you can avoid a lot of things just knowing your rights and knowing what you was right or wrong because they know already they want to know if you know because they're going to keep on pressuring you to do stuff that they know you don't have to do but if, you, if they know you don't know that you don't have to do it they're going to keep on trying to get you to do it just like a pimp anyway so let's begin oh the last thing I'm sorry one more thing so this kind of stuff don't happen to you this dude got taken out by a simple rear naked choke I know every BJJ school in America is saying I can't believe this dude got checking out with this simple rear naked choke simple just simple they got white belts on the mat doing uh, defending against this simple choke but because black men we not we not typically out in, we not in learning how, how to work do groundwork we're not learning how to do proper stand-up work we don't know we don't know how to set ourselves up. We don't know how to get points on the ground. We don't know how to keep our hips moving. We don't know how to do these things. Nobody's teaching us this stuff. Oh, we're not going to learn it. We waiting on somebody to come and teach us instead of going out and finding the information. So we got to learn how to defend yourself from multiple attacks, ground and standing. You got to learn this stuff, man, because this is how you're going to do. This is how you're going to get caught up if you don't. Not only by police, but other black people might catch you up. I mean, other people, it doesn't matter. See, you got to be able to defend yourself, regardless. Right now, we're talking about police brutality. Not to say that black people don't jump on black people, because we know that those are the major crimes against black people are caused by other black people. So, you need to defend yourself, period. This right here is just ridiculous, though. Now, this man was innocent, man. Just all he was doing was talking, a little upset. And, you know... Uh, We've seen white people go off like this on cops and all of that. And then what happens? The, the cop says, okay, you know, don't do that again. And that person goes home. Black person do any little thing, man, they end up dead. So anyway, that's a whole other thing. But like I said, learn how to defend yourself from ground attack. So let's, let's, let's get, get moving. Being military minded, be calm. If you come in contact with police, especially if they got helmets on, man, be calm. Be calm. Don't erupt. What you doing? Man? See, you can't do that to me. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's foolish to do. That's foolish. Especially if you know you've done something to break the law. Then you know they're coming for you. So, but if you're innocent, this brother right here might be innocent. Might have just been out there and they just decided to pick him up. Still, remain calm. Don't have aggressive behavior. When you aggressive, these dudes, uh, these people, they that turns them on. That turns them on, and then they decide, hey, they're gonna be all over you with that aggressive behavior. Don't do that. Always be non-aggressive. That way, you won't incite them 
just because sometimes, man, some of them are mad at their wife, like wife left them. They, you know, they in financial trouble. They just need somebody to take all that out on. And they got a badge and a gun, and you and and people that nobody care about, which is black people, they could just take it out on you, drop you off somewhere, beat your ass, drop you off somewhere, uh, and nothing never come of it. So don't have that aggressive behavior because you bumping up the chances for them to come in contact with you. You bumping up the chances for a four on five on one. And do you really want to die over them not telling them who you are and submitting to that? That's stupid. You got children, you got a wife, you got a woman, you got whatever you got going on. And you're going to just, because you don't want them to touch you or they don't touch me. And that's stupid. They have the authority by the state to do these things. And as you know, under certain conditions. So you got to know your rights so that you know that they under the certain conditions that if the conditions are being met, that, that you have the, you know, you should submit. Don't get nervous and speak too much. Yeah, these people are like, man, these kind of, those kind of police are like um, wild animals, man, like I said before. And if you start getting nervous and speaking too much, you're going to get them too much information. You're going to get them information that they could use to, you know, do something violent to you. You answer their questions short and sweet, and that's it. Don't get nervous. I know you're going to be nervous a little bit because they got you they got you hemmed up. But the worst thing that black people, black men, we talk too much. When they catch you up, don't say anything. Just like the just like the military. When if they get caught by the enemy, the military get caught by the enemy, what do they tell them to say? Your name, rank, and serial number. That's all you got to give them, right? That's all you should be giving these people is your name and answering any questions that they ask you that don't violate your religion. Uh, you know, you give them what they want to know and it's any questions that they ask you, I'm sorry, you know, you 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 know your rights whether you need to answer that question or not. Don't when I say don't speak too much, I mean, hey, y'all can't do this to me. I'm the you can't do all don't do all that. Especially if you're by yourself. You just that's just foolish. Now, I'm assuming all of this, I'm gonna make all these assumptions that you as a person are by yourself. So that's why I didn't be making this list. Anyway, keep your hands where they can be seen. You don't make these sudden movements. These people got weapons. They got tasers, guns. Uh, they got a gun. They got a hideaway gun. So you see the most officers you see with a gun on their hip. They usually got another gun up under their up under their um, on their pants somewhere else. They got another weapon for you. Okay. They got a stow. They got a stowaway weapon. Don't think just because oh man I see that gun. So that's it. That's the one gun they got. No, they got a taser gun. They got the, some of them carrying knives. So you don't know. That's why you should just deal like with them like you would be dealing with a wild pack of dogs that came up to you. You would be have your hands up and you would be moving extra slow. Right? Next thing is always identify yourself. Whenever whenever the police come up to you and contact you, always identify yourself. Make sure that you know they know who you are. Present proper identification. You have a driver's license, whatever, but present that so that they're not looking like, oh, you know, you want to show these people that, man, you are a citizen. They want them to think of you as a citizen, even though they think of you as a black person, not with no value. But you want to start bumping up your value, which is presenting your ID. Because what's our goal? You ain't out here to prove nothing to nobody. I'm going to prove I can, you know, I can get off. I ain't let them police get at me like that. You really? You trying to prove that? Or you trying to prove that you can wake up in your own bed the next morning? So you can fight, keep on fighting the fight you fight. Really? Come on, man. So present your proper identification to the authorities. Give enough information as to secure a timely release. Let's see. They start asking you questions. They're going to start probing you. They're going to... They train to see if you're sweating, if you're nervous or something. If if you just answer their questions, man, nine times out of ten, nine, I say eight times out of ten, if you just answer their questions in the right way, they'll see you know too much to be messed with, or you ain't worth the time to to really badger, and they'll let you go if you're innocent over something they'll let you go it's the it's those of us that want to start talking and be getting belligerent with them that's what dragged the whole thing out you trying to get away from these people man and uh, and they like i told you like like wow these kind of police is like wild dogs man so you don't want to get no you don't want to get them 
in a position where they feel threatened and not further threatened and then and then they start calling for backup and then they had you hemmed up there for a, an hour for nothing stupid and and or either try to drag you out the car or plant some kind of evidence on you something stupid don't make any sudden moves that should be obvious man you like i said you got to think about this is an enemy if you was out there and you was captured by the enemy in Iraq or Afghanistan or whatever you consider the enemy, if you was captured out there, would you move suddenly? You they got rifles trained on you, and you, would you make a sudden move? No. Stop thinking about the police as your friend, man. This ain't Sesame Street. This is not Sesame Street. This is the real world, man. The police is nine times out of ten not your friend. Every once in a while, that one out of ten police officers, man, that's a cool police, man. That's a cool cop, cool sheriff. They're cool. But that's not the majority. The majority of them is like, it's like the people that choked out old boy. They are like that. And all they need is a reason to kill a black person, man. So don't give them that reason by making sudden moves. The next thing is speaking complete sentences. No, see, cause no, no, fuck that. See, cause you know these man, obviously, you can't be doing all that. You gotta be like a military. You, you look like just be like if you was in Afghanistan or Iraq or in Israel, some place where you, you know, these people got guns trained on you, man. You gotta say, okay, I gotta speak clearly, cause my life depends on these people understanding what I'm what I'm saying to them. You know. So that's how you got to think about that yet black man when you out there on the street and black woman too when you out there on the street you, and you get confronted by these people and they give you that energy like hey i'm here you we're we're enemies once you get that energy man you know okay i'm dealing with somebody like this i have to be even more you should be doing other stuff more military minded you should be military minded anyway but now you know you got to really be military minded so that these people don't get the wrong impression or i don't you don't give them any reason to further continue uh you know uh stopping you in your, your day listen to all the instructions they give you carefully man they won't give you instructions they'll tell you to do stuff some things you and your rights to not do some things you are some things are you compelled to do just because they are the police officer and they pulling you over and they conduct an event an investigation therefore you got to listen carefully to find out what they're asking you to do and determine whether you need to do that or not are you violating your rights by doing that that's when I said you, you got to know your rights, man. If you don't know your rights, man, you out here freestyling. Speak as clearly as possible. You know, speak clearly, man, so these people don't have no reason to say, oh, I thought he said this, that's why we killed him. Oh, I thought she said this, that's why we took her to the ground and kicked her face in. You know, you want to speak clearly, man, and, and be as clear as possible so anybody around can understand what you're saying and how you're saying it. Use complete sentences as best you can. We all are not at the same level of education, but try to practice and use in complete sentences. That'll help you just in life, period. But try to speak in complete sentences when you're speaking to these people, man. Because like I said, when they got this wild dog mentality, man, you in trouble. And you, it's a, you are your, you going to be the reason why you not end up in a coffin or in jail. You. Try to understand what information is being requested and try to provide that information. Yeah, the cop walks up to you and says, hey, you know, you know what happened at the liquor store just around the corner? Somebody robbed it. You know anything about that? No, sir. I don't know anything about that. That's it. Well, were you over there? I was over there, but I don't know anything about that. I left. That's it. Don't go, oh, man, I don't do I know anything about that? I don't know. I saw a couple of guys hanging out out there, but I don't know. I didn't see everything that they were doing. You know, um, let's see. I don't, you know, let me look back into it. Let me think about it. Don't keep going on and on and on, man. You say you wasn't there. You don't know what's going on. And don't speak for nobody else. Don't do that. Just speak for you. I don't know. I wasn't there. I left. Now I'm gone. Don't lie. Cause they got a camera sometime probably. And then you lie and they say, hey, you was there. Then they got you. Don't lie. Dang, I was there, but I don't know nothing about nobody else. That's it. Boom. Speak for yourself. Being military might know your rights. Hey, man, you got to know what you, the rights you got. If you don't know your rights, man, then that's how these people could get you. You know, that's how they could get you. Right? The first question you ask when a police, well, after you identify yourself, 
Am I under arrest, officer? Deputy. Ranger. Am I under arrest? If so, what are the charges? If they say you under arrest, then don't say nothing. Just say, okay, I'm going to speak to my lawyer. Because they're going to read you your rights if you under arrest. They say, I'm going to put you under arrest, and they'll read you your rights. Okay, you got a right to remain silent. Remain silent. All you got to do is keep telling them, I'm going to speak to my lawyer. That's it. You don't say nothing else about that. Nine times out of ten, whatever they're trying to charge you with is going to fall off because you didn't open your mouth and say nothing. Even, even, if you, even if they charge you with something. But if you talk too much, like most of us as black men do, we talk too much, they can charge you with stuff. Next thing is, you say to them, they say, um, can you turn your cell phone off? You ask them, am I breaking any laws by having it on? If I'm not under arrest, you're just questioning me. Why do I have to turn my not? Why do I have to turn my cell phone on? But I am just I just like to leave. I feel more comfortable having it on. That's it. So you got to know your rights. They got a right to ask you that. They got a right to ask you whatever they want. But you got a right to respond. You don't have to tell your turn yourself. If you not you only time you have to relinquish control of your property is if you under arrest. You under arrest, you have to relinquish, you know, now you have to relinquish control of your property. But you're not under arrest, you do not have to relinquish control of your property. Check that for yourself, for your state. But that is the, my understanding. Check that for your own state. But whatever, whatever they ask you to do, make sure, and, you do, and if you say you, do, and you feel like it's going to violate what you, your rights, then you ask them, am I breaking any laws? If so, what laws am I breaking? Cause I don't want to break any laws, officer. I just want to, I just want to keep control of my rights. I just want to be able to, you know, have my rights. I mean, just knowing this kind of stuff and speaking this way, you're gonna save yourself a lot of heartache. Submit to submit, but not to violate your religion. Yeah, you believe in something. Most people understand that they believe in something. They have some type of religious belief. Most people, not everybody, but most of them. So if you have some type of religious belief and the cop asks you to do something that's against that, you let them know. I don't have to submit to certain things. You have rights and you don't have to you have to submit to everything. Some things it's gonna be easier for you to submit to. You have to submit to I present an identification. You have to submit to that. You have to submit to answering a few questions but not as to incriminate yourself that's all you don't have to submit you don't have to do anything unless you under arrest once you under arrest then you are giving up your rights have been taken from you you your privileges have been taken from you and now the person that put they, the people the agency that put you under arrest is now in charge of your property and you that you belong to them now so now your your rights are suspended but even then you got rights but you just got to know those rights but it rights to your property and rights to where you going your freedom now that they have those rights and they can take those rights when you have to submit to that or take the other option and go home in a co coffin or uh, not going home at all that's that's what those are those are the options you got out there if you by yourself we talking about you by yourself with you know four five six seven cops that's this is what we talking about here you got to be military minded in this situation do you really need to you got something to prove that so that you can get killed by six five or six cops you really that's something to prove not to me no need to prove anything to anyone your goal is to go home yeah you, you you're trying to go home you ain't trying to prove that you big bad j-bug you just trying to go home so do what you need to do to go home. You submit to what you need to submit to. But that's again, once again, that's knowing your rights. You got to know your rights. You got to read up on your rights as a citizen of America and as a citizen of the state that you live in. You need to know your rights. And so and nobody's coming over your house to teach you to go over that with you. You need to you got the internet, you got the library, you got all these different ways to find out this information. So you need to go get it. Be polite, brief, and as helpful as possible. You know, be polite. You know, they ask you, uh, where were you coming from? What you mean, where was I coming from? I could be coming from wherever I want to be coming from. You ain't got to do all that. Where were you coming from? Sir, I was just coming from the store. 
That's it. You ain't got to be going all in. I was getting eggs, milk, bread. You just got to be, I was coming from the store. It just came from the store. That's it. Keep your answers brief. Be polite and brief and helpful. You have any other information? Nope. That's it. That's as helpful as I can be. I can only speak for me, not nobody else. Did you see those three guys running down the street? No, sir. No, sir. I did not. Am I released now? Okay. Anyway, know your full rights. And it's your fault if you don't, man. If you don't know your rights, man, as an American, man, you here now already. They still keep telling you got rights. You need to read and so find out what your rights are so that you can use them to protect yourself as best as possible. If you don't know those rights, then whose fault is it? You waiting on the police to tell you your rights? The police ain't going to tell you nothing except for what's going to help them. You just saw in a video. They trying to talk to this man. This man, they, they realize this man is dead, but they trying to play like this man is still alive. So they're going to do what they got to do to protect themselves. Cover they cover on each other's butts and they'll cover each other's butt even if that mean they gotta send you to prison for 20 years they'll do it that's why it's your fault to know your rights because you can know knowing your rights will keep you out of jail keep you alive as much as possible nothing will fully stop police brutality but this will help you not have to deal with it as much me and military minded learn how to defend yourself properly this is Dr. Moses Powell, came up with Sanukas Rule Jiu Jitsu. This is Sifu Steve Muhammad, came up with the BKF system. I mean, there's, there's plenty of different systems and different, these, these are just two um, martial arts instructors that have come along to help us as black people. But there's many of them out here, and these, these two have many students, and there are many of them out there, man, and many other people out here to help. I just put these two out here, so people that's in the martial arts, Please don't get offended because your teacher's not up there or whatever. I'm just putting these people that I came in contact with. So you can learn these things if you want. And there's plenty of information, plenty of schools out here. Um, you need to learn how to fight with weapons. You need to learn how to fight with someone who has weapons. And when you don't have a weapon, and you need to learn how to fight with some, with some, when if you do have a weapon. You need to learn how to fight without weapons. You need to learn how to fight just toe to toe, fist to fist, or whatever. You need to learn how to fight whether the other person has weapons, whether you don't, whether they don't have weapons. You need to learn how to fight whether you have, you know, without a weapon. You need to learn how to survive standing on the ground. A lot of these guys now, a lot of these police is in these BJJ classes, and they they just need somebody's ass to whoop. They want to go out there and. Like I said, a lot of these uh, police are um, learning how to fight. The, they 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 go to these BJJ schools and they wanna they wanna get out here and just or kickboxing schools and they wanna they need somebody to beat up on. They tired of beating up on each other in the in the gym. They wanna come out here on the street and beat on somebody. Guess who they feel is expendable enough to beat up on? So all they need is an excuse for you to move funny and they had to they had to put you down. So we got to learn how to survive those kind of attacks and then how to deal with them and and how to, um, you know, uh, come through. Um, you got to learn how to be hit and keep fighting. A lot of people get hit and they want to stop. No, nope. you got to learn how to take a hit and keep on fighting. Just like a prize fighter, just like any other good fighter. You got to be it. You can't just, you don't think you're going to just fight and not never get touched. You're going to get touched. That's what you need to go to the dojo or go to a gym and find out gonna get hit hard you're gonna get hit across the head you're gonna get hit, hit in the stomach you're gonna get hit in the legs but you need to learn how to keep on going you need to learn to and with this is one you need to learn when to use mercy and when to have none because there's sometimes when you don't need no mercy some people don't never don't need no mercy when you're working with them and they put you in a situation where they don't need no mercy and then there's some people who need mercy you should be merciful too so you're gonna have to learn all of that uh, and so you need to go to a school and learn it I'm not like I said I'll just put these guys up here because these are people I came in contact with but there's other people many other um, black martial artists and other martial artists not just black ones other martial artists who teach good systems and you just need to go somewhere man so you can learn how to defend yourself you are a POW 
you are a POW, man. Say what you need to say to release your effect and only to to affect your release and only that. You are the enemy, not a citizen, and therefore a threat and must be neutralized. So yeah, a lot of these cops, that's how they think. Think like a soldier. Survive and regroup. Okay, you need to survive, man. You can't be going up against these people, man. And then expecting them to just, they're going to just let you do it. Especially as one on five or six. Them like the kind of odds you need to be really dealing with if you ain't got no way to get out of there. And uh, like I said, you have nothing to prove except you can wake up in your own bed the next morning. That's what you need to be worrying about. You got family. You got people that depend on you. You got a life. And so you need to be able to re recognize that, hey, I got to do this the right way. I got to do this. So I can't get caught up out here in no drama and then just leave my family who's gonna take care of them right so we're giving you you gotta think man you a pow when you coming in when you in when they coming to you like this they bring this energy to you like this now you're a prisoner of war and they're gonna be able to do with you just like uh, just like an israeli would do uh, anybody if you if it was ready to take a prisoner, man they don't have no mercy on nobody man <laughs> they just take you and uh, they just do you man so you got to be like that man you got to understand that hey if i don't if I, i'm dealing with some wild animals here man so i gotta i gotta move slow and just submit as best i can so that they will you know go away to make this make them go away because i got work to do helping my people things for us actually I'm gonna actually do five things for us Number one rate this video give us a rating let us know if you like what you what, what we're trying to do tell us what you think and what we can do to improve to make the people get better because that's the ultimate goal is to get these men and women to stop going to prison and start building better black families and better black people so we can all be better people on this planet next give us your comment you know tell us what you think uh, and what we can do to improve to help the people get better like I said that's the ultimate goal if you like if you think what we say makes sense talk about it and leave us a comment we appreciate that and that'll get the ball rolling and then we'll start talking about some of these tough issues and maybe we can do something about them next thing is to like this video if you like what was said or something we're doing we would like to know that you support us we're not asking for donations just the push of a button that's all we ask for a few clicks of the button a few clicks of the mouse screen the mouse uh oh mouse a few clicks of the mouse and then um you know we will they show us that you support what we're doing uh share this video next thing is to share this video share this video in your sh social network if you like what was said or something we're doing please share this video on your in your social media network and talk about it with your friends if you think people if you think people need to hear this message then please share it as much as possible thanks for your support yeah just share as much as possible with this video with you might have a nephew or cousin that needs to hear this kind of thing or it might have people in your own network that need to hear this just on your social network just please share it as much as possible and the last thing is remember we have the Urban Male Life Skills Boot Camps. That's our flagship program. We have other things. We have the home study course. We have the uh, worksheets and workbooks. But this is the flagship program to help our people try to get better so that we can stop having these young men and women go to prisons, particularly the men, because once we get the men, then I believe that the women will follow. So once, once we get them to stop going to prisons, then we, the women will follow. And then it will bring our, our community closer together and we can stop pitiful condition we're in and start standing up and uh, doing some things to help our people get employed and have better lifestyles so anyway uh, those are the things that we need you to do we, we ask you to do please help us in this cause thanks a lot